Well hello everybody, welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making something uh, that would be served or could be served uh, on Good Friday at Easter basically and this is going to be hot cross scones. Now traditionally hot cross buns are eaten at breakfast time on uh, Good Friday in England and they're um, a bread bun filled with spices and uh, dried fruits and chopped mixed peel and then uh, they, they have a syrup on the top of them to, to coat them and they have a cross on the top made simply from flour and water basically. But I already have a video for that online and although I know that in the shops and in the supermarkets you can now these days get lots of different types of hot cross buns with cranberries, cherries, chocolate chips, nuts, this that and the other in. The I prefer the traditional one and because I already have the video I thought well I'll try it with scones and see how they turn out. So it's going to have the same flavours as the hot cross buns but it's going to be like a, a nice light scone. So the first thing I've done is to uh, preheat my oven to 220 celsius, that's 200 celsius with a fan 430 Fahrenheit and I've lined a couple of baking trays with parchment paper. So I go on to the ingredients and for this I have 450 grams which is three cups of plain flour that's based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup. I have 80 grams of cold butter which is five tablespoons plus two teaspoons. I have 80 grams which is six tablespoons plus one teaspoon of caster sugar, two medium eggs, that would be large in the USA. I have 250 milliliters, uh, one cup plus two teaspoons of uh, milk. Then I have 20 grams, which is just about seven teaspoons of uh, baking powder, which seems quite a lot, but usually for scones you, you would use self-raising flour and I'm using plain flour and so to turn the self-raising flour into plain flour you use baking powder and then with scones you add more baking powder so seven uh, teaspoons at three grams roughly three grams a teaspoon is what that is. I have one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons of mixed spice. Then I have um, 100 grams of uh, raisins. Now I would usually use currants but for the scones I think raisins will work better so I'm using raisins but you could use sultanas, raisins, currants, whatever you wanted. And I have uh, 40 grams, sorry, so that uh, 100 grams is three quarters of a cup and then I have 40 grams which is a quarter of a cup of chopped mixed peel. So the first thing to do is to rub the sugar, sorry, rub the flour and the butter together until you have a breadcrumb like texture. And I'm going to do that in a larger bowl. But I need to add my baking powder in to that at this stage as well. And I'll give that a stir around. and then I'll put my butter in. I'm just going to rub that between my fingers until it achieves that breadcrumb like texture which is just like this basically. And the butter will disintegrate into the flour. So that's good like that and there may be just a couple of little lumps of butter but that will be fine, That will, they will break down. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my sugar, salt, mixed spice and cinnamon and I'm going to mix those around and I'm going to add in 
the salt or the raisins and the chopped mixed peel as well and mix those around And then I'm going to put the egg in, the two eggs, and most of the milk. But I'm not going to put all the milk in. I'm going to hold back a good couple of tablespoons. And I'm going to, you can use a knife and mix this around like this until it forms a very shaggy dough. But I'm going to do it with my Danish bread whisk. That seems to work quite well for these things. And you mix it until all the dry ingredients are incorporated with the wet. And if you need to add more liquid, just drop, uh, dribble in a little drop more milk. And that's actually looking quite good. So um, I'm just going to use a spatula to scrape the edge. And that's nice and wet and sticky, but I haven't used all of the milk. In fact, I will use the remainder to brush on the top later. I'll just scrape this around and as you can see it's wet underneath so I'll mix that in a little bit and that's good enough so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip that out onto my work surface but I'm going to use quite a lot of flour on the work surface And I'll put some flour on the top of the dough as well. I'm going to pat that down and like that. And I've coated that with flour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that up and fold it in half and press it down. And I'm going to turn it around, flatten it again, and then fold it in half again. And I'm going to do that two more times. like that and then again like that and then with that folded four times which is going to help um, make the scones nice and light and fluffy I'm going to roll it out to about an inch thick. You could do this, you could press this 
down by hand, you don't need to roll it. Like that. And I have here a uh, seven centimeter, which is just over two and three quarter inches cookie cutter. And I'm simply going to take that and press down like that. And I may need to flour the cookie cutter. And because I have here flour and water for my uh, cross you know, the paste for the crosses I can just dip that into the that flour now you don't want to twist these if you twist them when you press down it will um, help the scones to develop um, sort of unevenly so by not pressing down you hope that the scones rise evenly when they bake and there I have nine so I'm going to put them onto a baking tray leaving a gap between them And I will re-roll this remaining dough, but these scones uh, from the remaining dough may not rise in just quite the same way because the dough doesn't like to be worked too much. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put 75 grams of plain flour in a bowl with some water and I have a hundred millilitres of water there um, and I'm simply going to mix that around until it forms a dough that I can pipe and I probably don't need as much as this but um, it's better to have more than not enough. So I want this to be smooth. And I think that's good enough. So I'm going to put that into a piping bag. So with the scones on the tray and my um, paste for the cross uh, ready, what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to just cut the tip off my piping bag. Just, I don't want it very wide. And I'm going to pipe across onto each of the scones. And then, and I think you could have done this before piping, but I'm doing it after piping. I'm simply going to brush some milk onto the buns. Like that. And then I'm going to put those into the oven and I'm going to bake them for 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, I'll take them out of the oven, allow them to cool a couple of minutes on the baking tray and then put them onto a wire rack and I'll come back and show you the results. The scones baked for 15 minutes and I've taken them out of the oven and put them onto a baking tray. And as you can see, they've risen quite nicely and they've got that um, crack around the rim which is uh, what you expect from a, a scone. And so what I have here is I have just a tablespoon of golden syrup and a teaspoon of hot water, which I've mixed together to make a sort of glaze. Now you could just use a sugar and water glaze if you wanted to, or you could use um, some apricot jam or some honey. I'm just going to brush that on the top of each one and although they're warm I'm going to break one open and have a taste I'll do this one so as you can see it's fully cooked inside I'll have a taste of this. Now usually I would put some butter on this, but I'll taste it just as it is. Mm. It certainly has the complete taste of a hot cross bun with the spices and the citrus, the chopped citrus and uh, the sultanas. Very, very good indeed. Nice and light and soft. And scones are best eaten on the day that they're made. And if they're not eaten on that day, it's best to put them into the oven to reheat them just for a couple of minutes to bring them back to their nice uh, freshness. You can also freeze them, of course, if you want to. So that's going to be it for this recipe and I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please give me a thumbs up below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an I that you can click on and that will take you to a link for this recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.